Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Windwalker Monks in Shadowlands. For those of you who have been keeping up with gameplay on the beta, you may have heard whispers of Windwalker Monks moving in a direction that has frustrated many veterans of the class. While they still have a place in their current meta due to some powerful new additions, this isn't without some glaring issues that the spec is facing. In this video, we've teamed up with one of North America's top Windwalker monks, Seth Curry, to take a look at exactly what's happened to the spec while also covering all of the basics that you need to get started with your own Windwalkers the moment Season 1 of Shadowlands begins, including the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. We'll also be releasing a refresher guide when Season 1 starts that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and which your best comps are. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment those guides are out. So from BFA to Shadowlands, monks have seen some rather interesting changes to say the least. While some of these changes certainly work in your favor, a few can definitely be seen as a step in the wrong direction for the class as a whole. First, we've seen Expel Harm become a baseline ability for the monk class as a whole, providing you with ranged chi generation. Fortifying Brew has also been made baseline, giving you access to a major defensive cooldown without the need to select it as a PvP talent, opening up an all-important slot for another talent. Another spell being made baseline is Invoke Zuen, replacing Touch of Death as your main offensive CD, which we'll touch on again later. Storm, Earth, and Fire has been removed from the global CD, and Paralysis has come down to a 30-second cooldown from 45. All of these changes so far are very positive for the class, with a mix of quality of life changes and buffs. But beyond those positive changes, we've also seen the introduction of several issues. First and foremost, Windwalker's damage without their Biss Covenant ability is looking to be incredibly low. Looking at their damage breakdown in shorter games, it's clear to see that Fallen Order is providing the majority of their damage. The change to bring Expel Harm as a baseline spell plays a part in this as well as the damage component has been significantly reduced, leaving it doing less damage than even Tiger Palm now. Another potential negative is the reverting of Touch of Death to be its old execute mechanic. Instead, as mentioned earlier, Invoke Zuen has become baseline and has essentially replaced the old Touch of Death as your major offensive CD. Now, in theory, this should be a buff, given that you've basically gained an execute spell while retaining the previous iteration of Touch of Death within your Invoke Zuen. But in reality, it's unlikely to always play out this way as your pet can be CC'd or killed to prevent the damage from racking up. Still though, the Touch of Death execute is a welcome addition, so it's not all bad. Either way though, given how things are currently tuned, it's clear that needing to rely on your Long Covenant CD to do the majority of your damage is going to be problematic in the long run. Finally, one last issue to look at is the change to make the most useful and core monk macro no longer work in Shadowlands. Moving forward, you can no longer cancel aura your role with a macro. This was very core to the gameplay of monks in BFA, and the loss of it is frustrating. Now you'll instead have to jump roll to manipulate the distance, but you have less control over how far you will go. Alright, so what do all these changes actually mean? Well, the playstyle of Windwalker Monks remains more or less the same as it was in BFA, but with slightly more elements seen all the way back in Legion. Given that you mostly rely on strong offensive CDs now, you'll mostly adopt to a hit-and-run utility-based playstyle, opting to try and score kills whenever your offensives are ready while making use of your defensive utility to outlast your opponents. And with all of that being said, Windwalker Monks are certainly shaping up to be one of the better melee in Shadowlands, but unfortunately this is mostly due to how strong their Biss Covenant ability is. This of course means that the viability of the spec is riding on their borrowed power, which could see a nerf at any moment. This would of course immediately bring Windwalkers down a few levels. To conclude this section, Seth Curry feels Fallen Order should be nerfed and instead Windwalkers should be compensated fairly with a decent increase to their overall class specific damage. This is mostly due to the fact that Fallen order is very easily dealt with by classes with a large number of roots. So for example, Frost Mages. In these types of matchups, it's incredibly easy for opponents to avoid the damage of Fallen Order. But then again, against classes that don't have tools to deal with it, you'll often find yourself completely overwhelming your enemies with a ridiculous amount of damage to their entire team. So, a nerf to this ability and a buff to Windwalker damage as a whole will likely bring balance to the spec and cement its viability throughout Shadowlands. 
All right, next up, we're going to take a look at everything you need to get started with your own Windwalker Monks, starting with the best races. If you're playing Alliance, you probably won't be surprised to hear that Human is your best competitive option, as it is the only race that gives you the option of playing with Relentless while still having a way to break out of stuns. Alternatively, you can even play with a Medallion, giving you the ability to break out of stuns every 90 seconds. And if you're playing Horde, again, as you probably expected, Orc is hands down the best race as nothing really compares to the stun reduction from hardiness coupled with the extra damage from Blood Fury. Now, if you are interested in mixing it up and playing a non-meta race, Seth Curry suggests going with a Panda as an off-meta pick, but this isn't really recommended over the two viable races and only has its place in very niche scenarios. All right, so you've picked your race. Now let's go over your talents in order. Starting with the level 15 row, we actually see three utility talents disguised as damage spells. We suggest picking up Chi Wave as your default pick due to it dealing the most damage and allowing you to get into combat from 40 yards. Although Chi Burst can be used to try and get people out of stealth, and even Eye of the Tiger can be considered to break a rogue's vanish or a mage's invisibility mid-game. Overall, this leaves this row mostly up to personal preference, but if you aren't sure what to go with, just pick Chi Wave. Next up in the level 25 row, Tiger's Lust is always your best option. The spell brings a ton of utility allowing you to remove roots and slows from both yourself and teammates, while also providing a movement speed increase. The other two options in this row only buff your own mobility and just don't really compare to Tiger's Lust. In the level 30 row, Seth Curry recommends picking up Ascension as Windwalkers already have strong resource generation in Shadowlands, making this talent complement the spec quite nicely. Moving down to the level 35 row, Ring of Peace stands out as your best option multi-purpose utility spell. It can be used in pretty much any way you can think of, as a defensive tool for CC to knock people down on Z-axis maps to trap people out of line of sight, etc. Compared to your other options, the possibilities with Ring of Peace are endless. In the level 40 row, your best option will change depending on the situation. If you expect to take a lot of consistent damage while needing to remain aggressive in that particular matchup, Inner Strength stands out as a strong pick. However, if you're facing a comp with a caster, Diffuse Magic will be your go-to as it's one of your best defensive cooldowns in that situation. The penultimate row sees two options being quite close in strength. Both Hit Combo and Dance of Chi-G are viable, with most people currently leaning towards Dance of Chi-G. However, as the expansion progresses and our strength starts to scale up, the value of Hit Combo will go up, so it's likely that Windwalkers will eventually swap over to it. And finally, in the level 50 row, you'll want to pick up Whirling Dragon Punch to retain access to Storm, Earth, and Fire, which is an excellent offensive CD. All right, with your standard talents out of the way, let's take a look at your best PvP talents. Your standard trio is going to be much the same as it was in BFA, with Turbo Fist, Reverse Harm, and Alpha Tiger being a strong build in most matchups. You'll then want to take Grapple Weapon against all melee except for Windwalker Monks and Feral Druids as they don't rely on a weapon for their damage. Usually, you'll take this over Reverse Harm. And when picking up Grapple Weapon against Warriors, Rets, and DKs, you'll also want to use Tiger's Eye Brew instead of Alpha Tiger. The only exception to this is if you prefer to play without Grapple Weapon, in which case you can use Turbo Fist, Alpha Tiger, and Tiger's Eye Brew to deal maximum damage. The only other PvP talent to consider picking up is Ride the Wind, which you'll pretty much exclusively do against Frost Mages, and when doing so, it can replace Reverse Harm. Okay, so you've hit max level and you've got the right set of talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best covenant for your class, which will give you access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. And if you've been paying full attention so far, you'll know that you're pretty much borrowing all of your power right now from your Bis Covenant, the Venthyr. This pretty much all comes down to how overpowered the Venthyr Monk ability Fallen Order is, contributing to the large majority of your damage as we've already covered. You also gain Door of Shadows, your Covenant signature ability, but this doesn't really have anything to do with the Venthyr being your best Covenant. If Fallen Order gets nerfed though, the Kyrian will likely be your backup Covenant choice, as File of Serenity is a great defensive to have, along with the Kyrian Monk ability, Weapons of Order not being too bad either. Alright, after selecting your Covenant, you'll then gain access to three soulbinds, of which only one can be active at any time. If you go with the Venthyr, you'll want to select Nagia as your soulbind given that both Familiar Predicaments and Thrill Seeker provide decent value in PvP. Theotar is a decent alternative as you'll gain Wasteland Propriety. However, given it's the only useful soulbind ability in Theotar's tree, we do suggest sticking with Nagia. 
However, if you do go with the Kyrian, both Pelagos and Mechanicos have a selection of strong soulbinds. First, Pelagos comes with Let Go of the Past, a passive boost to one of your best stats, Versatility. And Mechanicos gives you access to Sparkling Drift Globe, which is an AoE stun that triggers when you drop to 35% health, which is potentially game-changing against strong, setup-based comps that try to kill you in a small window. Although going for this Soulbind ability will only allow you to pick up one Potency Conduit. Speaking of, after selecting your Soulbind, you'll notice there are still a bunch of empty slots. These are where you'll need to fit in Conduits, which are split up into three different categories, Endurance, Potency, and Finesse. The best endurance conduit and the only one worth mentioning is Fortifying Ingredients. This simply makes your Fortifying Brew a more reliable defensive CD by also giving you a shield when used. As for your Finesse Conduits, all of them can be pretty good in the right situation once you've got their higher ranks, but the two that stand out as the best are Lingering Numbness and Tumbling Technique, so pick whichever you prefer. This then leaves you with two open Potency Conduit slots. We recommend picking up your Covenant-specific Conduit so Imbued Reflections as Venthyr, or Strike with Clarity as Curian, as these provide you with the biggest damage increase out of all of your Potency Conduit options. You'll then want to take Coordinated Offensive as your second conduit for the significant damage boost to your Storm, Earth, and Fire. This leaves your ideal build looking like any of these, depending on the Covenant and Soulbind you chose. Finally, the last step that you'll need to take is to craft your best Legendary. Currently, none of the options really make or break the spec given how niche their perks are, so it almost just comes down to personal preference. The three worth mentioning are Invoker's Delight, solely to buff Fallen Order, Keeper's Skyreach as a quality of life buff to Tiger Palm, and Cephas's Proclamation as an overall solid pick. The only other one worth looking at is Escape from Reality, but only if monks end up being targeted a lot in Arena. Still though, it can also be quite useful in other aspects of the game, such as Raided Battlegrounds but it's quite a niche pick and certainly won't be the first legendary you craft. All right, everyone, that concludes our first look at Windwalker Monks in Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need to get started in Season 1, so be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include updates to the information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and which your best comps are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.